maybe you want to speak on your own. I'm not a journalist, nobody. <laughs> What do you just just ask a few questions and then we just finish it. Um, so you've been pro proposed to do a specific project for the Punta and for that specific architecture. Uh, how did you react and what was your main subject in the painting? Complete fear at first. <laughs> and then, no, the main subject, I thought about the room and creating a space in the room, like with the two paintings, being able to op operate architecturally, trying to deal with the space and um, so somehow this idea came to me of a vertical and horizontal um, solution because the room really occupies a central spot, not central in terms of location inside of this, the structure of the of the building, the punta, and then that also operate, is a very important spot in terms of Venice, this the structure of this point in Venice. So for those purposes and this, and this cube room being in there, I thought about the crosshairs on a map and you thinking of this this vertical and horizontal axes. And so because of those, that determined the idea of the structure of the paintings. And then, of course, relating back to history painting and the two formats of landscape painting and vertical kind of altarpiece painting that or origin here really in a sense from here. So those two points of departure in a way for the paintings. Which is, I think, your first time in your work. Yes. And then uh, I know you've been making a lot of research based on historical monuments, or monuments still alive though, uh, in between New York and Venice. Yes. New York where you live, Venice where you spend a lot of time. <laughs> how did you uh, choose them and how did you make the equilibrium in the painting? The in a way, the two cities have so much in common Like in, that I was thinking about when I was looking out of my studio window and you can see the whole harbor of New York and you see these big ships come in, especially the big commercial cruise ships. And the, the interaction between these two cities and their, their source, economic source, political source, the evolution of the cities, became very clear to me somehow this connection between the two cities, which is in a way very obvious. And um, so then I started to think about the formats of arc, uh, the, the, the kind of informa architectural information that was developed because of these two different types of economic centers. And in many ways, the architecture in Venice is almost like a, it was in a sense this propaganda architecture of the, of the beauty and wealth of the city. And, uh, and that, so that spurred this kind of idea of show and um, in and, and a particular language of power. And so I was really interested in trying to layer those details, those super intense details of that type of architecture. But that also informs so much of what you see in New York and this kind of expression of a certain kind of um, cultural power. And so for me, those were the two points of inter like this intersection between those two. New York is, again, has a very different, the drawing in it is very different than the Venetian painting because that's mostly just the architecture. Uh, I made a tour with an Italian journalist who was extremely surprised, and I love her reaction, that the horizontal one was New York and the vertical one was Venice. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's it, it, because in, it, it, it's in, in New York is such a vertical city and Venice is such a horizontal city. But that's really the picture of Venice. When you're really within it, it's a very, because the corridors and your vistas are very, and can, can be can feel very vertical, but I think that came about by the format of the paintings and the and the what the overall kind of um, f sensation you have when you're in front of one of the paintings and how the two types of architecture become. Like the New York painting in a vertical format just seemed to mimic skyscraper, and it didn't necessarily work, you know. And it's not New York when you're in New York; it's a human scale. Yes, exactly. As Venice, you a small little what it to be the small city. Yeah. And I loved also that you pick up the those two cities which were in the way a uh, utopian origin of the exchange, of the democracy, but of the mixture. Something about the the dynamic and the change that is always in your paintings. Well I think that both cities went through or are in well, I think we look at both cities in very nostalgic ways have this idea this nostalgic reference when you think of Venice or when you and also with New York and 
Um, New York is a very, and I think also now having spent more time in Venice, outside of even tours in Venice is a dynamic city, especially outside of the center of Venice. And so I've become really to understand that. And at first I thought of Venice mostly as this historical city. Um, and not a very alive, active city of the day, you know, but more like a museum. And I think that's really not true. And so there's these, and, and New York also, it's really like also a very dynamic, of course, important city. And so you have these, but, but the origin of them really was about this, um, you can't forget the origin when you're experiencing that place, especially in, in Venice, but also in New York, you have this intense, um, constant reminder of what it was and, the, and kind of the ideal of that because of the architecture. And I think in Venice, um, which informed so much of what evolved elsewhere, that um, that kind of dr that, that that desire is really clear, but in a in a very propagandic way. You know what I mean? Like, so that's I think that what what I'm finding more and more. You know, what became interesting, I think, to me. I think it's okay. No, finished. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>